So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, so we will make a little bit, uh, we will remind ourselves the topics from the previous times. <clears throat> if you remember, first we were speaking about the difference but between the spiritual and material rasa or spiritual and material <laughs> happiness, how material happiness is very much flickering and is constantly changing. Boga, Tyaga, at some point we want to enjoy, then next moment we want to renounce this so-called enjoyment. Whereas in comparison to that, spiritual rasa, spiritual happiness is amrita, is eternal. And it's always increasing more and more and more. We spoke also, we gave definition what is pure, what is devotional service and what is pure devotional service. And if you remember, in order one activity to be devotional service, it should be done for Krishna. It should be done with a favorable attitude, favorable mood. And it should be activity which follows strictly under the order of previous acharyas or shastra. This makes one activity devotional service. And then to be pure devotional service, also this activity should be freed from any material desires and especially from uh, contamination of karma, jnana and so on, yoga and so on. So also we spoke, we uh, described the six main characteristics of bhakti. And we said that these are bhakti is all auspicious, all good qualities are coming from bhakti and everything bad is destroyed. This is Subhada and Kleshagni. And then bhakti is very rarely achieved and the happiness from bhakti is so strong that even liberation, happiness from liberation is very much insignificant in comparison. So these are the uh, qualities appearing on the level of bhava, moksha, guta, krit, and sudurlaba. And then we have two more qualities belonging to bhakti which are appearing on the level of prema. These are Shri Krishna Karshini, devotional service attracts even Krishna and Sandrananda Visheshatma, devotional service on the level of Prema is so intensified, so strong, the happiness coming from it is so strong that actually devotee cannot perceive even the existence of happiness from liberation or happiness from sense gratification. So, uh, And also we spoke, we gave definitions about what is sadhana bhakti, because we now, we are trying to perform sadhana bhakti following the process of devotional service. So we were saying that sadhana, definition of sadhana is that we engage our senses in active service of Krishna, and these should lead to focusing our mind on Krishna as well. And we spoke also that there is two kinds of Sadhana Bhakti, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, when we are performing this just because of order of scripture or the order of Guru, although still we may not have so much taste about it. And then Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, when we are doing the same things, same activities, but already everything is very spontaneous. We just want to serve Krishna from our heart. And we also went through the different levels of uh, devotees, 
according to their qualification, Kanishta Adhikari, Madhya Madhikari, and Uttama Adhikari. We were describing their characteristics the last time. So now we will continue with chapter four of Nectar of Devotion, which is called Devotional Service Surpasses All Liberation. <clears throat> so as Tosi Prabhu mentioned, the Uttama Bhakti, one of the uh, characteristics of Uttama Bhakti was that um, it is free from uh, desire for liberation, uh, desire for uh, karma and jnana, fruitive activity and liberation. So in chapter four, Rupa Goswami, uh, Sri Prabhupada, <clears throat> in Act of Devotion, chapter four is mainly uh, explains that the devotee disregards liberation. That's, that's the topic. Devotees um, have uh, so much, experience so much happiness from devotional service that they completely disregard liberation. Liberation is not at all a uh, something important for them. So that's that's for chapter. As we know, in personalism, Maya bodies especially, they they become Maya bodies because they are very much uh, frustrated. They are disappointed because they try to enjoy in material world. They try to be to be Krishna, to be the supreme enjoyer, but they fail. And as a result, they become so frustrated that they become impersonalists, mayavadis. But for devotee, and they try to find happiness in negation, in uh, neti neti, negating relationships. They say everything is false because I could not enjoy it. This is the perverted logic. If I couldn't do it, nobody can. So I uh, could not enjoy. That means everything is false. <laughs> so therefore, they try to find shelter in uh, destroying everything, in claiming that we are not uh, personalities. God is not a person, or uh, that all uh, I'm God, you're God, but actually God is impersonal. It's just void or Brahman, which is basically the same. So they try to find happiness there, but the devotees don't find this at all uh, appealing. Uh, even uh, Prabhupada Saraswati says that for the devotees, all this uh, impersonal dry speculation is, and uh, even the thought of impersonal liberation is, uh, is like hell, hellish. Why? Because um, it deprives them from the nectar of devotional service. When uh, somebody commits this, uh, Sri Prabhupada calls this spiritual suicide, uh, merging into Brahman or merging in, uh, in the body of the Lord. This is uh, this is what the, the yogis they aspire for. This is uh, a nightmare. It's uh, very disturbing. Even the thought of it is very disturbing for the devotees because they love Krishna. They experience great bliss in serving Krishna. You cannot explain uh, to somebody who is in love with, uh, even in the material world, if somebody is very close to some somebody else. Um, you cannot, the very thought of um, separation from the, the loved ones is, is painful. So uh, if this is the case in the material world, we can imagine how, uh, how, how stronger, how much stronger are these emotions in the spiritual plane when the devotee is in love with Krishna. Therefore, devotees don't like this idea at all. And they completely ignore liberation. So for chapter four is um, basically, if you, if you, I don't know if, if you had the uh, opportunity to, to look at it, but chapter four is- I did, I did. Thank you. <laughs> Whole things That's I did, yeah. Quotations, uh, Rupa Goswami, Sri Prabhupada quotes, different verses from uh, scriptures showing how the devotee, the pure devotee is attracted to devotional service and has no regard for liberation. So we will read um, a few things. Uh, I think um, that the, one of the most important verses quoted here, and Sri Prabhupada also says in the in Nectar of Devotion, is the Atmarama Shloka. But okay, let's, um, let's, read, let's read the first, the first paragraph. Let's start yes. from there. Maybe two screw can read. So, how much a devotee is seriously attached 
to the devotion or service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can be understood from the statement of Maharaja Prito, which is described in Srimad Bhagavatam 4th Canto, 20th chapter, verse 24. He prays to the Supreme Personality of Godhead thus, My dear Lord, if after taking liberation I have no chance of hearing the glories of your Lordship, glories chanted by pure devotees from the core of their hearts in praise of your lotus feet, and if I have no chance for this honey of transcendental bliss, then I shall never ask for liberation or this so-called spiritual emancipation. I shall simply always pray unto your Lordship that you may give me millions of tongues and millions of years so that I can constantly chant and hear of your transcendental glories. Okay. So that's basically the idea. Uh, and all uh, the other quotations, they uh, explain the same point from this different perspectives, different with different mood. Because devotees, they have uh, unique, everybody has a unique love for Krishna. But basically they repeat the same idea. And there is, I think, um, uh, yeah, but before that, there was this, uh, I think, uh, Queen Kunti was quoted. Uh, this one. Okay. Yes. Maybe we can read this one. So we are reading from page 44. This is the third paragraph. Page 44, third paragraph. In Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, eight chapter, verse 20, Queen Kunti is praying to Lord Krishna at the time of his departure. My dear Krishna, you're so great that you are inconceivable even to great stalwart scholars and Paramahamsas, fully liberated souls. So, if such great sages who are transcendental to all the reactions of material existence are unable to know you, then, as far as we are concerned, belonging to the less intelligent woman class, how is it possible for us to know you, your glories? How can we understand you? In this verse, the particular thing to be noted is that the personality of Godhead is not understood by great liberated persons, but only by devotees such as Queen Kunti in her humbleness. Although she was a woman and was considered less intelligent than a man, still she realized the glories of Krishna. That is the purport of this verse. Yeah, the idea is that uh, we are all less intelligent in Kali Yuga. Kalao Shudra Sambhava. And, but this is not a disqualification because by the process of devotional service, we can realize Krishna also. And uh, by reading this uh, quotation from uh, First Canto, I remembered another verse from First Canto, from the prayers of Queen Kunti. There she prays that um, now, dear Krishna, now you are living you're leaving Dvaraka, uh, you're leaving, um, you're leaving us, the Pandas, you go back to Dvaraka. And um, before, when uh, there were many calamities for us, many difficulties, hardships, you stayed with us. So Queen Kunti says, I prefer, uh, I prefer this, uh, let this, what, what was the, let these calamities happen. Okay. Again. Yeah, disaster. This means that uh, disaster. Yeah. I will uh, I will see your face and seeing your lotus face. That means that I will not see the repeated the repeated birth and death. So I thought that this verse is also connected with our topic because basically there Queen Kunti says that um, I don't want liberation from uh, material suffering. From material suffering. And um, if I have to choose between <laughs> liberation, that means peaceful life without difficulties, but also without you, without your association, and difficult life, <laughs> uh, hardships and problems and headaches, etc. But I will have your association, then I'll, I'll go for you. <laughs> the same thing happened with uh, when Arjuna had to choose between Krishna and his army, and he chose Krishna. Uh, the same thing happened, the same thing, the same logic, the same mood, the same uh, idea is behind the activities of all pure devotees in their own, own unique situation, in their own unique uh, bhava, love for Krishna. They always choose Krishna. Um, inevitably, they, they choose Krishna and they 
disregard all other things, anything else. So it is not, it is not that um, Queen Kunti is praying for uh, problems, for suffering. No, she just prefers to, to have uh, difficulties, but with to have Krishna, Krishna with Krishna, uh, instead of rather than having peaceful life without Krishna. That's that's what I wanted to to, to make this point. Uh, and this should be our, also our attitude. It is a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. Krishna in uh, Nine Canto, he explains that Naham Atmanam Ashase Mag Bhaktai Sadubirvina Shriyam Chatyantikim Brahman Yesham Gatim Hambara. Krishna tells um, Durvasa Muni, without my devotees, I don't want to enjoy my. Um, Atmarama state of existence, my internal um, happiness, or my uh, opulence, my uh, spiritual um, pleasure. Without my devotees, I, I don't want to enjoy. So the same is uh, the attitude of, of the devotees. Without Krishna, they don't want to, to, to have anything to do with anything. <laughs> if Krishna is not there, they're not interested. Krishna and his devotees. All right, so then uh, let us quote finally the Atma Rama Shloka. Atma Rama Shchamuna Yo Nir Granta Api Urukrame Kurvantia Haitaki Bhaktim Itam Buto Guno Hari. Okay, uh, maybe two people can read. Shabrabad, he is uh, writing on page 44 down. Another passage which is very important is in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, seventh chapter, verse 10. And it's called the Atmarama verse. In this Atmarama verse, it is stated that even those who are completely liberated from material contamination are attracted by the transcendental qualities of Lord Krishna. The purport of this verse is that a liberated soul has absolutely no desire at all for material enjoyment. He is wholly freed from all kinds of material desires, yet still he is irresistibly attracted by the desire to hear the, and understand the pastimes of the Lord. We may therefore, therefore conclude that the glories and pastimes of the Lord are not material. Otherwise, how could the liberated persons known as Atmaramas be attracted by such pastimes? That is the important point in this verse. Okay, so the idea is clear. Uh, Prabhupada makes this point uh, very often. He gives the example of uh, sometimes of Mahaprabhu who was sannyasi, a very strict sannyasi, so strict that you cannot imagine. His followers uh, in female bodies, they were advised to offer obeisance from, from a distance. You can imagine what will happen in this And <laughs> Nowadays, some, this sannyasi tells his disciples, you offer obeisance from 100 meters. <laughs> there will be a big scandal. So Mahaprabhu was very strict and still, Prabhupada makes the point, still he was taking uh, pleasure in describing the pastimes of the divine couple. That means they are spiritual, uh, they're beyond liberation, that's the meaning. So uh, the, the logic is quite clear. Uh, some questions until now? So there are five types of liberation, and she probably writes that out of these five liberated stages, the one which is known as Sayujya, or to merge into the existence of the Lord, is the last to be accepted by a devotee. That means the devotees never accept <clears throat> this one. This is the next paragraph. The other four liberations, although not desired by devotees, still are not against the devotional ideals. So devotees don't want them, but they're not against. Why they're not against? Can somebody explain? Because they hope um, they, they are also okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Say again, Prabhu. Uh, they are. Uh, they, there is also liberation. Uh, this is also like yogi can go for that. Uh, but a devotee actually not uh, too much intent to do that. Uh, like uh, achieve the, that type of goal. Yes, right. So the last one is the Shajajya, which is devotee kind of interested, but not the other uh, four. 
So, so you but that is, I have, got, yeah, I have little confusion. Okay. If it is not five of this, then Sajun Jo, how comes they would be interested with? Okay. If you can explain. No, so UJ is the one that the devotees are not interested. They never accept because this will uh, mean that they are separated from devotional service. But the other four, to become one with the Lord, to live on the same planet as the Lord, to obtain the same bodily features as the Lord, or to have the same opulence as the Lord, Sri Prabhupada says, they are, although not desired by devotees, that means devotees don't make a bargain with the Lord. Okay, I'm going to serve you, but then I want to live on the same planet as you. You don't do this with your close friends, with you, your loved ones. You don't make stipulations like this. <laughs> um, so devotees don't usually do that. But Prabhupada says, these four types of liberations are not against the devotional ideas because they still allow performance of devotional service. This is why they are not against. Because the Yuji doesn't allow anymore. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, because here it says, Prabhupada says that those who are promoted to Vaikuntha planets can be promoted to Krishna Loka from Vaikuntha. But from Brihad Bhagavatamrita, we know that that's not possible. So how do we reconcile the two? Why, why not possible? Yeah, because Gokumar had to go back to material world to then be promoted to okay, like doesn't, Krishna Loka. Okay, he doesn't say directly. <laughs> it's not directly to the Lord. It says, go. Uh, can go, so it doesn't exclude, doesn't forbid that he will go to, to, but, to earth. But, yeah, but that, that there needs to be detailed at, at this point, that, right? So that you cannot go from Vaikuntha to Krishna Loka okay. straight. You yes. need to go through this. Yes, through, through, through Bama Vrindavan. David Bama. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it is possible sometimes devotees ask question. You know, sometimes we are um, we a little, um, um, little worried. What will happen if I end up in Vaikuntha? It's a quite luxurious uh, kind of, <laughs> how to say? You don't worry. Be <laughs> right, but you. what if I, if I go to Vaikuntha, I actually want to go to Goloka Vrindavan. I mean, compared to the situation, now, we are conditioned by the material nature, it's quite, uh, to be in Vaikuntha is quite nice. Out of but, the two options, <laughs> we end up with the option sleeping until 10 and 11 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So it is possible. So we shouldn't be worried. <laughs> Even if we end up in Vaikuntha, we can go back to Goloka. I mean, go back. Yeah, we can go to Goloka. Or not. And, I mean, but usually it doesn't happen because um, if you are in Vaikuntha, you are perfectly happy there. You don't want to go any, anywhere because you are completely satisfied. But in rare cases, it is possible, so don't worry. Krishna will arrange. You want... Uh... Like, like, for example, you want to become a devotee. And then after some endeavors, you are making it to the local temple. And you join the temple, you enter the temple. And let's say they give you service in the kitchen. And you feel totally satisfied. Why? Because you're doing this for the pleasure of Krishna. So you're totally happy and satisfied. But then, maybe every evening after seeing the devotees who are coming from, from Harinam, totally blissful and but saying the all these amazing stories and, yeah, Prabhu, today it was super duper, <laughs> nectar, bliss, jai, haribo. And then, Gradually, the, the devotee hearing this again and again. So you're saying kitchen service is Vaikuntha and uh, Sankirtan is Guloka Vrindavan. I'm just giving example. <laughs> the, the, don't, don't take me wrong. <laughs> but just the point is, by associating, you develop desire for something different. This is how it can happen. So well, let's... On Vaikuntha? Yeah, maybe some um, another Gopkumar goes. By. Yeah, like, but on Vaikuntha, you will not get association of... You can hear, residence. you can hear of different pastimes, of Krishna, and then by hearing these oh pastimes, yeah. you say, "Hey, I mean, uh, this sounds great." Hey, man, you want to join the Bhakti? You look like team? a pure devotee of the Lord. <laughs> so um, I would, but I think I haven't been practicing, <laughs> uh, practicing proper sadhana today. <laughs> I haven't attended my sixteen hours, therefore I cannot oh. preach. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. What do you want to say? 
Oh, yeah. Um, actually, they uh, in um, yeah in uh, in the country they know about this pastimes. <laughs> of the Lord, of the Lord. Some of them know. So therefore, some of them are very sympathetic towards Gop Kumar. I mean, all of them are uh, understand understanding, but there are, there are different groups. Some of them are kind of uh, saying, well, "You don't you don't do these things here." But others they are saying, "Well, this is just another way of worshiping our Lord." Oh. So, but they know about them, some of them. Anyway, it is possible theoretically. I think it's it's kind of uh, very esoteric question for us right now. Shri Prabhupada is saying it, that means it's possible. It's possible. Mm -hmm. All right. There so, is a way to have that. Out of many kinds of devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the one who is attracted to the original form of the Lord, Krishna Vrindavana, is considered to be foremost, first class devotee, although all of them are first class, and they are also pure devotees. The Vaikuntha Vasis, they have prema for the Lord, but it's different prema than uh, the one from If you said this, this later, we are going to study about this. It's prema which is mixed with jnana, mm. with knowledge about the greatness of the Lord. Yeah. Such a devotee is never attracted by the opulence of Vaikuntha or even mm -hmm. of Dvaraka, the royal city where Krishna ruled. Oh. So they are just attracted by the sweetness of the Lord. Does that mean so if we reach that Bhagavad and learn about the greatness of the Lord and then we but I, I thought that we we're supposed to do that. We were supposed to read tenth canto and learn about the sweet pastimes after we learn about the greatness of the yeah. Lord. But then we have to forget the greatness of the Lord to really develop this Krishna Loka power. Like uh, how does that work? Yeah, it, I mean what do I know? How Maybe you can repeat the question. Oh, okay. Uh, the question is here it is stated that um, the body is never attracted by the opulence of Vaikuntha. But Deva uh, Dharma Prabhu says that, um, first of all, we, we are supposed to learn to get acquainted with uh, the, the knowledge about the greatness of the Lord. And then on this basis, we can study 10 Kanto Bhagavatam, which is the smiling face of the Lord and, and the, Madhurya, the sweetness of the Lord is presented there. And then he says, but then what, what does it mean? That means we have to, again, to forget about his greatness. Uh, how does it work? Uh, I don't know how it works. But, uh, from, from, uh, from, what I, from what I hear um, from my gurus, it becomes natural. Like you're naturally uh, attracted to, to somebody. You, you, don't, you don't care so much about um, uh, that he's, for example, a very wealthy, very important with personality with uh, lots of power and influence. You don't care so much about this. It is part of the picture because it uh, you know this about him or her, but it's not an important element in your relationship. It it serves to enhance your relationship sometimes. sometimes. Mm. Like sometimes um, the intimate devotees of the Lord in Vrindavan, they uh, I mean, they, they are aware that he, he is the Supreme Personality of God. Sometimes they get this. But then they, this is like, for them it's like, our Krishna is this great, our friend, our, our beloved, he is this great personality. He's not other way around. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it enhances, their, it enhances right. their sweetness of their so relationship. Yeah, so I think, yeah. Some I understand so <clears throat> this like, uh, so still even knowing the greatness, they realize that, this form is the topmost. Yeah, and for them, he's, he's Krishna. Uh, yeah. Their mother, Yashoda, Nanda Baba. For them, this is their son. It doesn't change their rasa. It doesn't uh, switch the mood. But Yoga Maya helps to cover that. This. Yeah, because, yeah. But sometimes there are other devotees. For example, uh, Vasudev, the father of Krishna. When uh, he hears how uh, the great sages glorify Krishna, he, this changes his, his mood. And then he, he sees all these Narada Muni, Vyasadeva, they all glorify my son. So mm, this is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he changed his attitude towards the Lord. The same happens with Arjuna when he sees the universal form. Mm. So for some devotees, it happens, for, but there are certain devotees, the most intimate devotees, it doesn't happen. Whatever they hear, whoever sages, whatever they say, this is my son, this is my beloved, it doesn't change. Vast, and so when... That's influence of yoga mile, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 but... Yes, of course, yoga mile is always... Um, 
arranging Krishna's customs. But I mean, Yoga Maya also influences the, the, the other devotees. And Krishna. And Krishna. So in this case, when um, so Vasudeva, he um, uh, hears these prayers by the sages, and then he, he steps forward, and he also starts to pray to Krishna as the Supreme Lord. And then Krishna is, um, he thinks, he becomes uh, very shy, because his father is praising him. And he's kind of embarrassed, and then um, he, he thinks, well, my father, now he praises me as a Supreme Lord. I don't like this. And he wants to switch back the roles the, again. The, the, the sweeter uh, rasa that he has with his father. And then he offers um, kind of impersonal, uh, impersonal arguments to, to his father. <laughs> because Vasudeva, he glorifies him. We are the Supreme Personality of God. And then Krishna says, well, in a sense, we all God. Everybody's God, so I'm not so special. <laughs> Everybody's God, so and he switches him back. Anyway, it's very interesting in 10 <laughs> Kento. He's joking, right? Well, I mean, he's yeah, he's playing an in a sense. Joke his father. <laughs> when Krishna is cornered, he start, He pulls out the last argument. Everyone is God. That, that's it, yeah. It's, uh, all, or when uh, Nanda Maharaj wants to arrange for this uh, Indra Yagya, and then yeah, yeah. Krishna preaches to him Karmi Mamsa philosophy. But it's interesting that. All these philosophies uh, and, and all knowledge actually uh, uh, is meant to enhance our rasa with Krishna. It's not meant to be used independently, as people try to use it nowadays. In which way? To, like in Ishpanishad, there is um, this statement that um, uh, vidyam cha vidyam cha yadat. Uh, the video is different from Vityam cha Vityam cha yasta vedo bayagam saha Avityam Rityam Tirtha Vityam Rityam Asthate Knowledge is different from um, from illusion and from ignorance and um, ignorance means that you disconnect the knowledge from Krishna so people try to this is what is called dry dry speculation you have uh, uh, two types of logic, uh, laukika, material logic, and shastra mulaka, which is uh, rooted in shastra. And uh, when knowledge is disconnected by from the origin, Krishna, then uh, that's what I mean. Um, people try to use it independently for their own purposes. They want to present themselves as a great scholar, something, somebody who is very knowledgeable. But actually, the knowledge is meant to... Um, to be used in Krishna service, and ultimately we see the the devotees in Goloka. They use the knowledge to enhance their the rasa with Krishna. The gopis are joking with Krishna. They use different Sanskrit <coughs> words in different um, sense, so that they joke with Krishna. Krishna himself he's using karma yamamsa in personal knowledge as a joke, as a joke. But you never know. You know, jokes in spiritual world are real. Like <laughs> you know, you you start. There was this story of Ma Mother Ishoda. She was telling some. She was trying to scare Krishna about some. But if she's, if he's not, um, if he doesn't behave properly, then some monsters will come and take him. And then the, when the monsters were coming. What <laughs> <laughs> kind of monsters? Well, in the spiritual world, there are no monsters, of course. But it's for, just for the pastime. Sometimes there are rumors of demons in Goloka Vrindavan. Anyway, we kind of um, went sidetracked. So, what was the point here? Out of the many kinds of devotees, <clears throat> the one who is attracted to the original form of the Lord, Krishna in Vrindavan, is considered to be the foremost, first class devotee. Although they are all pure devotees, still there is gradation. Rupa Goswami says, from uh, an objective point of view, you cannot avoid the conclusion that there is, although uh, they are on absolute platform, there is still highest, higher, 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 highest. Rasas. A devotee who is attached to a particular form of the Lord does not wish to redirect his devotion to other forms. This is the last paragraph. For example, Hanuman, the devotee of Lord Ramachandra, knew that there is no difference between Lord Ramachandra and Lord Narayana, and yet he still wanted to render service only unto Lord Ramachandra. This is due to the specific attraction of a particular devotee. Once um, one of my authorities, my guru, he, he was offering 
um, there was Sri Prabhupada Gasa Puja and he he spoke um, about Sri Prabhupada and he said, Sri Prabhupada, dear Sri Prabhupada, um, the Krishna that you know, we want to know this Krishna. Any other Krishna, we are not very interested. But the Krishna that you know, that you serve, this Krishna we want. So in the same way, the devotee's relationship with Krishna is very unique and very intimate. So they will not exchange it for anything. So basically, not just relationship, devotee doesn't want just relationship with Krishna. Devotee wants relationship with Krishna in a specific way. With these features of Krishna and these uh, mm. qualities and these features of Krishna that his authorities want to have. So the devotee he is always following the mood of his authorities, his guru and the guru of his guru, like that. Mm. It's not just, yes, it's about Krishna, but at the same time, it's a, a very specific feature of Krishna. Just like this verse, it reminds me about this verse from Chitai Shirtamrita, which nobody could understand, but Rupa Goswami understood. And there it's, it says that I, uh, this is the same, the same person that I'm in love with, um, same environment, the same, the same nights of such and such season, but I, uh, something is not right. What is not right? I want to take him back to Vrindavan. Yeah, so it should be exact. All right, so this was about chapter four. Questions? So again, this chapter, chapter four, just to conclude, deals with the idea that devotional service gives much more taste and happiness from every kind of liberation. That's why devotees, they are not interested from liberation, especially becoming one with the Supreme Lord. In some cases, they can accept the other four kinds of liberation, personal liberations. But generally, the pure devotees are not interested even from these kinds of liberation. They just want to be with Krishna and serve him the way how he wants them to serve him. And now we are going to chapter five, which is called the purity of devotional service. It's a very simple chapter. There are just few nice uh, ways how Shri Prabhupada presents the uncondition, unconditional nature of devotional service, how devotional service is not dependent on anything. And anyone and everyone in any circumstances is qualified to practice devotional service. Okay, <clears throat> all of the previous instructions imparted by Srila Rupa Goswami in his broad statements can be okay. summarized thus. As long as one is materially inclined or desirous of merging into the spiritual fulgence, one cannot enter into the realm of pure devotional service. So, do you remember uh, there was an analogy used by Rupa Goswami? He was comparing the desire for uh, bhukti and mukti, uh, for material sense, enjoyment, and liberation. Was comparing these two desires with something. You remember? We cannot say the name of the, the, the evening. Right? You can. <laughs> still, it's not I mean, even for, uh, so, okay. <laughs> it's okay, still. It's only after the sunset. David Omdar Prabhu is playing jokes now. <laughs> so, with what was the comparison? <laughs> I know, but you, you know that then I know it. The keyword, <laughs> word, but others have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. One of one of. One of you knows. Okay, so what about the rest? Do you remember? Uh, with witches or ghosts. Oh. So, the ghost until, of karma and until this yeah. desire is present and is strong, strongly present, uh, we cannot enjoy devotion service. Of course, we don't want to enjoy. We are like ghostly hunted. Yes. And we cannot dedicate to devotional service. Because our mind is constantly jumping here and there. Oh, I want sense gratification. Oh, no, I, I want to be austere, more austere than others. No, I want sense gratification. No, I want to be austere. And we don't think about bhakti. We think of everything else, but we don't think about Krishna. About And uh, therefore, uh, bhakti is uh, so unique because uh, we have been doing uh, karma and jnana since time immemorial. Uh, it's called maniac depression. Maniac depression. First, you are maniacally attached to something material and then we we try to enjoy as much as possible and then we um, 
become depressed as a result. So this is karma and dhyana, and we have been doing this since a long time. And bhakti is something different, therefore it's, it's not so easy to catch. Although Sri Prabhupada said, um, bhakti, bhakti is so simple that you can miss it. Very simple, but it's uh, and not so typical for us. <laughs> All right. Um, next, Rupa Goswami states that devotional service is transcendental to all material considerations and that it is not limited to any particular country, class, society, or circumstance. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, devotional service is transcendental and has no cause. That means what? Devotional service doesn't have a cause? Means what, what does it mean? Everything has a cause. No? Krishna is Sarva Karana Karana. So what, why it stated here that devotional service is transcendental and has no cause? It's not also material world. Right, there is no material cause. You cannot earn the privilege of becoming a devotee by material means. <laughs> so therefore devotional service is, is independent. Okay, some message there. It's independent from karma and jnana. On the contrary, karma and jnana depend on bhakti. Devotional service is executed without any hope for gain, and it cannot be checked by any material circumstance. It is open for all without any distinction, and it is the constitutional occupation of the living entities. That means that everybody can become a devotee. It is not uh, limited to people in India, to the Brahmanas only, to people who are very intelligent, or very sharp, or very beautiful, or very rich. Everybody can perform that. And it sounds trivial, but hasn't been always hasn't been always uh, so obvious. There was there used to be a um, period, and Shri Prabhupada yeah. described this in Nectar of Devotion, a period in the Middle Ages when this was not so clear. And then Bhakti Saraswati had to over overcome the um, all opposing elements. Those people who were saying that. Only a particular group of society can engage in devotion service. And still, there are still such people. And there is a book by Sukhatra Maharaj called Apasam Pradas. If you want to know more about those people, you can read there. Jati Gushai, uh, Smarta Brahmanas, Kaula Baula. Yeah, all these <laughs> special people. And not real devotees. So here, particularly, Shri Prabhupada speaks about Nityananda Vamsha. Nityananda Vamsha. Shall we read a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, who wants to read back to Jimmy? Second paragraph. Will they hear? Yes, strongly. In the Middle Ages, after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya's great associate, Lord Nityananda, a class of priestly persons claimed to be the descendants of Nityananda, calling themselves the Goswami caste. They further claimed that the practice of spreading devotional service belonged only to their particular class, which is known as Nityananda Vamsha. In this way, they exercised their artificial power for some time until Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, the great Acharya of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, completely smashed their idea. <laughs> it was a great hard struggle for some time, but it has turned out successfully and it is now correctly and practically established that devotional service is not restricted to a particular class of men. Besides that, anyone who is engaged in devotional service is already at the status of being a high class Brahmana. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur struggle for his for this movement has come out successful thank you okay she Goswami warns now she will uh, and she will uh, he'll balance this now uh, with, uh, with uh, the next uh, point because we can think okay so now I'm I'm Vaishnava Vaishnavas are the best so I'm the best <laughs> easy logic so she Goswami warns however that if a person is properly initiated by a bona fide spiritual master he should not think that simply by the acceptance of such initiation, his business is then finished. One still has to follow the rules and regulations very carefully. If after accepting the spiritual master and being initiated, one does not follow the rules and regulations of devotional service, then he is again fallen. One must be very vigilant to remember that he is the part and parcel of the transcendental body of Krishna. And then, and then it is his duty as part and parcel of to give service to the whole of Krishna. If we do not render service to Krishna, then again we fall down. 
In other words, simply becoming initiated does not elevate one to the position of a high-class Brahmana. One also has to discharge the duties and follow the regulative principles very rigidly. So this is so we don't become puffed up. We can say a little bit about this personalities with which your Prabhupada is saying Bhakti Shri Bhakti Sinansar Sajitaku was fighting. It was really a serious fight. Uh, they wanted to have full control on uh, Chichetani Mahaprabhu's teachings and even his birthplace. <laughs> so at the time of Shiva Bhakti Saraswati Thakur, it was established that the birthplace of Chichetani Mahaprabhu is in Navadvip. This is on the other side of the river, across Mayapur. By the way, what is called Navadvip nowadays in, uh, in the, in the time of Mahaprabhu was called Kulia. If you read in Shri Chaitanya this is what is nowadays now it's Kulia Gram. And, and Navadip is where our temple is now, Mayapur. This is Navadip. Yeah, so the, the point is that they were claiming that they have the right to take care of the birthplace of Mahaprabhu so that all the pilgrims go there, of course. Mm -hmm. Then Bhakti Vinod Thakur, with the help of Bhakti Siyan Saraswati Thakur, they actually found out and started to establish that actually the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is on the other side of Gang. At that time, what now we know as the Yoga Pit birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was just a jungle. There was one, two villages somewhere around, but more or less just forest and jungle. So in order to re-establish re the truth, Shiva Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur started yearly parikrama. Every year he was doing parikrama with pilgrims to establish actually that this is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was going to all the holy places around which are described in a book of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The book is called Navadvip Mahatmya. So there, there are all the many of the main holy places around the Dham Mayapur Dham they are described. So he was bringing the pilgrims to all these places. So while they were going through <coughs> nowadays Navadvip, actually these envious Brahmins, they uh, hired Gundas. And these Gundas, with the help of throwing stones, really pressed Bhakti Saraswati and his disciples so much so that they have to hide in a house. And now they didn't know what to do. So Shiva Bhakti Siyanta Saraswati Thakur, in order to his disciple to save his life, one of his disciples who was a Grihasta said, Maharaj, you take my clothes and I'll take yours. And because he was very young, he just started rushing out of the house. And all these Gundas started running after him. And then Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur with the white clothes, together with his other disciples, they just immediately left in the other direction. So it was really a serious fight. And as Shiva Prabhupada is saying at the end, Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur managed to establish that Vaishnava is higher even than a Brahmana. And that's why if someone is a Vaishnava, automatically he should be accepted as a Brahmana. There was a debate one time, big debate, yes. Mm. It is described in a book which is called uh, Brahman, and Brahman and Vaishnava. So Bhakti Yonot Thakur was, was very sick and could not go. And Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur went there to present their viewpoint. And then there were so many people, they were glorifying the Brahmanas, quoting Shastra, different qualities of the Brahmins. Then Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur stand up to speak and then for a long time he was also glorifying the Brahmins. Different qualities, their character, their forgiveness, everything. So everybody was very impressed because Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was very knowledgeable. Everyone was so impressed by him. And then when everybody was very relaxed and happy how he glorified the Brahmins, then he started glorifying the, Vai the Vaishnavas even more to show that they are even in a superior position. And even if a Vaishnava is coming from a 
family of dog, dog eaters or he's very low born by birth, still he's higher even than a Brahman. And he was quoting verses, verses, verses. Then at the end, everybody starts really applauding. Of course, the Brahmins did not like this, but general public, they were very much appreciating the knowledge and the philosophical explanation. Yes, of Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati So it was really a fight. It was a struggle, this to be established. And that's why Shiva Prabhupada is saying, uh, this is on the top of page 48, our Krishna consciousness movement in the Western world is based on the above mentioned proposition of Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada, our spiritual master. On his authority, we are claiming members from all sections of the Western countries. The so-called Brahmanas claim that one who is not born into a Brahmana family cannot receive the secret threat and cannot become a high-grade Vaishnava. But we do not accept such a theory because it is not supported by Rupa Goswami nor by the strength of the various scriptures. Rather, we see the opposite. Scripture is explaining that someone even low-born by birth if he knows Krishna, the science of Krishna, he can be a guru. He can teach others, he can uplift others spiritually. And we see it practically, like in our life, that we met uh, Vaishnavas, and these Vaishnavas, maybe they were not born in a Brahman family, but they are such a powerful Vaishnavas, they managed to elevate us to a level of existence which we will never dream even following four relative principles, getting up early in the morning, chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra every day. What? Like we, the Western guys, how it is possible? So this shows the power of Vaishnava. Okay. Sri Rupa Goswami also says that if one is regularly discharging devotional service, there, is, there will be no question of fall down. Here Sri Prabhupada is paraphrasing a verse from Bhagavad Gita. This is uh, <clears throat> chapter 49, second paragraph. Chapter, page. Uh, sorry, yes. Page 49, second paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Rupa Goswami paraphrases verse from Gita. Mamcha yo vya bicharana bhakti ugena sevate sagunan samatitita prama buye kalpate. If one is regularly discharging devotion service, there will be no question of fall down. But even if circumstantially there is some fall down, the Vaishnava need have nothing to do with the Pariyashchita, the ritualistic ceremony for purification. This is very important. If someone falls down from the principles of devotion service, he need not take the Pariyashchita performances for reformation. He simply has to execute the rules and regulations for discharging devotion service. Do we have internet? Yes. Uh, and this is sufficient for his race statement. This is the mystery of the Vaishnava devotional code. Okay, you get this? No need to preach if you do something wrong. Why? Why there is no need for preach? Because the devotional service is already, the devotional service already includes. Yes, that's the best preach. Yeah. It's not even the goal of devotional service to, to get absolved, atoned for the sins. It just says, this, this is a mystery. Yeah. They just connected before reading the previous chapter that one of the aspects of devotional service is to clear the way also. Yeah, very good. Yes. Mystery? Yeah, it just, Prabhupada just says, this is a mystery. This is the mystery of the Vaishnava devotional code. Yeah, in the sense that it is um, so powerful that people are find it. Difficult to believe. Okay, um, I think that's I it. I think there is uh, that's it one show. more point. Okay. Uh, of course, Shio Prabhupada is giving few quotes to, sub sub to, to prove this, this important point that actually, even if someone has a problem in his uh, spiritual life, if he seriously continues with his devotion of service that is enough no need to do anything else and then we can go on the page 50 down the bottom 
the same thing is still more emphatically confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. Can you see? Mm -hmm. 11 Canto, 5th chapter, verse 41, in which Karabhajana Muni addresses Maharajani as follows. My dear king, if someone gives up his educational duties as they are prescribed for the different varnas and ashramas, but takes complete shelter, surrendering himself unto the lotus feet of the Lord, such a person is no more a debtor, nor, he, nor has he any obligation to perform the different kinds of activities we render to the great sages and ancestors, living entities and family and society members nor has he any need to bother executing the five kinds of yagyas, sacrifices, for becoming free from sinful contamination, Pancha Mahashuna. Simply by discharging devotional service, he is free from all kinds of obligations. This is the famous verse. <laughs> Read more. No need. The purport is that as soon as a man takes his breath, he is immediately indebted to so many sources. He is indebted to the great sages, BC prophets, by reading the authoritative scriptures and books. For example, we take advantage of the books written by Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva has left for us all the Vedas. Before Vyasadeva's writing, the Vedic literature was simply heard, and the disciples would learn the mantras quickly by hearing and not by reading. Later on, Vyasadeva thought it wise to write down the Vedas, because in this age, people have short memory and unable to remember all the instructions given by the spiritual master. Therefore, he left all the Vedic knowledge in the form of books such as the Puranas, Vedanta, Mahab, Mahabharat, and Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. Continue. Here, yeah, Sri Prabhupada is explaining that m there are many other sages and we are indebted to uh, sages. We are indebted to many, to our forefathers, and so on, and so on, and so on. So then, uh, but by the one stroke of devotional service if someone gives up all obligations and simply surrenders unto the supreme personality of godhead he is no longer a debtor nor obliged to any other source of benefits that is also a very important point so basically devotional service is not dependent on anything else on any material conditions this is the idea of this chapter purity of devotional service and also Devotional service is self-sufficient. If one completely surrenders to devotional service, no need to do anything else. This is 100% enough. Nothing we will lack in our life if we completely surrender our life to practicing Krishna consciousness and giving Krishna consciousness to others. Everything will come. Everything will be perfect. And this called Shraddha, faith. This the firm conviction that this is true. Yes. So I, I was thinking strongly. I really like I really like this point where you're saying that later on the Asadi thought a wise to write down the Vedas because in this age people are short memoried and unable to remember all the instructions given by the spiritual master. Therefore he left so I was thinking not only is it just that the Vedas are compiled down, but Prabhupada also wrote down all his instructions. It also applies that we have very short memory, so we can remember all of Prabhupada's instructions. But it's very important that we read Shiva Pop. That is very important that I read Shiva Prabhupada's books regularly because mm. I'm a Kali Yuga memory. Good realization, yes. We should, we have to read the books of Shiva Prabhupada. Regularly. Nice point. Mm -hmm. Especially because Shiva Prabhupada is uh, the Samstapaka Acharya. That means he presented all the teachings of all the Acharyas. He presented them for the people in Kali Yuga. So he extracted the essence of all scriptures so he's like yesterday basically for us and this makes him the founder of charity he's not shiva is not ordinary guru in his school he's not like our initiating spiritual master so shiksha he's on a high higher level than that okay <clears throat> so then chapter six how to discharge devotion service we're going to read through this chapter basically yeah so just to Remind ourselves, we were speaking about sadhana bhakti. Yes, we gave definition of sadhana bhakti, and then we said there are two kinds of sadhana bhakti: vaidhi sadhana bhakti and raganuga sadhana bhakti. Do you remember? 
So now, from this chapter six starts practical description of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. How we have to execute devotional service in practice according to rules and regulations. And this will go on for quite a few chapters. So basically, we will have a few chapters on Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Then we have two chapters describing Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. Then two chapters describing Baba Bhakti. And one chapter Prema. And this is with what we are going to do. So let's just read this chapter, chapter six. Who okay, wants, who wants to Mugarabu. start? Shirobu Goswami says that his elder brother, Sanatana Goswami, has compiled Hari Bhakti Ras, the guidance of the Vaishnavas, and therein has mentioned many rules and regulations to be followed by the Vaishnavas. Some of them are very important and prominent, and Shirobu Goswami will now mention these very important items for our benefit. The purpose of the statement is that Sri Rupa Goswami proposes to mention only basic principles, not details. For example, a basic principle is that one has to accept the spiritual master. Exactly how one follows the instructions of the spiritual master is considered a detail. For example, if one is following the instruction of his spiritual master, and then instruction is different from the instructions of another spiritual master, this is called detailed information. But the basic principle of acceptance of a spiritual master is good everywhere, although the details may be different. <coughs> Sri Rupa Goswami does not wish to enter into details here, but wants to place before us only the principles. Okay, so now Sri Rupa Goswami will describe the principles. He will not deal with details, but he will just describe the main principles of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. So, let's read them. Accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master, becoming initiated by the spiritual master and learning how to discharge devotional service from him, obeying the orders of the spiritual master with faith and devotion, following in the footsteps of great acharyas, teachers under the direction of the spiritual master. Here, pay, we should pay attention. Following in the footsteps of the great acharyas, under the direction of the spiritual master. That means you cannot just follow Jiva Goswami or Bhakti Nataku unless we follow the instructions of Sri Prabhupada. So if we are not clear, let's say, uh, sometimes it seems that there is a contradiction between what the Acharya say and Sri Prabhupada. Only apparently. We are uneducated, we don't know. So it seems that there is a contradiction. So if we cannot uh, what's the word? Understand, understand how understand. there is no contradiction. Reconcile, uh -huh. reconcile. Yes, understand. Then safe, the safe, the safer option, safer option is to go with Sri Prabhupada. Of, of course, there is no contradiction with what, between what he says or any other chair. But if we think there is contradiction and we cannot reconcile, better to go with Sri Prabhupada with our chair than to. Say okay, Jiva Goswami says this, so I follow Jiva so <laughs> This is not acceptable. Okay, understand the, the logic? This is safe. You don't know, okay, you follow Shri Prabhupada. You don't know how Shri Prabhupada says the same thing as Jiva Goswami, but at least you don't reject your uh, chariot. And it's unchaste, and if you do this, no person in the spiritual world will ever trust you. Because, for example, in Golokavrindavana, Sometimes, I mean, they always follow authority, so they are under authority, believe it or not. So when uh, sometimes some of the gopi is sent to Krishna as a messenger, and Krishna wants to enjoy with her, if she, she should never accept this because she's a messenger there on the behalf of Radharani. So if she ever accepts Krishna's advances, then. She's not trustworthy. You see, that's the thing. So it's the same principle applies here and there. So we should be very chaste to our Acharya. This is the only thing you have. We have this faith in Shiva Prabhupada. That's the greatest treasure. We don't have knowledge. <laughs> we don't have austerity. We don't have any other quality. Only thing that we have is faith. Loyalty. We're loyal loyalty to Shiva Prabhupada. Right. Okay, so you go on. Fourth and fifth. 
Okay. Inquiring from the spiritual master how to advance in Krishna consciousness. Six, being prepared to give up anything material for the satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of God and Sri Krishna. This means that when we are engaged in the devotional service, that when we are engaged in the devotional service of Krishna, we must be prepared to give up something which we may not like to give up. And also we have to accept something which we may not like to accept. Seven, residing in a sacred place of pilgrimage like Dwaraka or Vrindavan. Eight, accepting only what is necessary or dealing with the material world only as far as necessary. Nine. So this, uh, as far as necessary, may, uh, may differ, may be different from person to person. Some people, some devotees, they may uh, have the need to engage more in material activities. Some devotees may have less needs. Sri Prabhupada gave the definition um, of comfortable. What is comfortable? Comfortable is what is not uncomfortable. <laughs> It means if you enter in a situation and it feels uncomfortable for you, that means it will interfere with your service. That means you have to try to engage uh, with the material nature as, uh, as much as uh, necessary. it is necessary to improve the situation so that you can perform properly your devotional service. So it can be some people can need uh, more facilities, some people need less. It depends on the, on the person. So you cannot judge, you cannot say, well, this is, this is my approval. No, the person, he, he has more needs, you know, he's more, um, he, in order for him to function properly, he needs more facilities and some people need less. So we shouldn't be uh, dogmatic and narrow-minded. That's why we have different we ashramas. Judge. Yes, very good point. Therefore, we have different ash ashram situations. Brahmacharis, they need less, and the Grihastas, they need more. Therefore, they are Grihastas, that's why. And then Vanaprasas, they have to, again, uh, try to limit and to uh, sh shorten, uh, yeah, to limit, to shorten the, to decrease the field of the, the material activity and then sanyas is even more so if you want to say something i was wondering he was talking about how we should also we should be comfortable in devotional service yeah so if we need more material facilities to be comfortable that is okay but also i wanted to ask of course there is some there, there is some is, uh, sorry there are some uh, limits yeah. and brahmachari cannot say i need to be comfortable that means i need my own room my own uh, facilities no that's not allowed there are some uh, limitations, limitations of the ashram. Uh, which are coming with the ashram and they are described in shastra and given by the authorities okay. so to some extent you can do it but not to okay. any any not anything go <laughs> okay so they so they're, they're allowable allowable, allowable. facilities uh, yes yeah okay. so this was your question yes Okay, so two more. Nine. Observing the fasting day on Ikadashi and ten, worshiping sacred trees like the Banyan tree. Okay. Well, all three worship is included in worshiping Tulasi for us. So we worship Tulasi, we worship all sacred trees. Done. There's no need to worship Banyan tree. These 10 items are pre preliminary necessities for beginning the discharge of devotional service in regulative principles. In the beginning, if a neophyte devotee observes the above mentioned 10 principles, surely he will quickly make good advancement in Krishna consciousness. So this is very, very important. These basic 10 things are very important. This is the beginning of our devotional practice. Out of these 10, it is said that the first three are most important. I think Sri Prabhupada later is saying this. But the first three are the most important. Without them, practically we cannot start our devotional service. So which are these three? Read them again. Back to Jimmy. Accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master. Two, becoming initiated by the spiritual master and learning how to discharge devotional service from him. And three, Obeying the orders of the spiritual master of faith and devotion. 
So we have to accept shelter, take initiation from the guru, and following, following his instructions, serve him. This is the essence, the most important. That's why in one lecture, Shri Prabhupada is saying, we simply have to get instruction from guru. And if we execute that, this is success. This is Krishna consciousness, so simple. You have a guru, your guru is giving you instruction. You give your best to follow this instruction, this is success. Your life is success. Okay. Okay, then the next 10 important. What did you want to do? Oh, yes. Try it. Try next, okay. okay. The next ten. 10. Number 10. Yes, you start um, from one. They start again from one. I'll start again from one. One should rigidly give up the company. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, non devotees one should one should be very intolerant uh, oh that's a different translation that's a different one okay no, uh, yes. maybe take take the book of back to Jimmy oh I think I'm gonna have to change this book okay. 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 one should decorate no can you show her? Uh, uh, two, par two paragraphs uh, one before that. Rigidly. Oh, okay. <clears throat> got it, got it. One should rigidly give up the company of non devotees. Mm -hmm. One should not instruct a person who is not desirous of accepting devotional service. Number three, one should not be very enthusiastic about constructing costly temples or monasteries. Four, one should not try to read too many books, nor should one develop the idea of earning his livelihood by lecturing on or professionally reciting Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Five, one should spell, one should not be neglectful in ordinary dealings. Six, one should not be under the spell of lamentation in loss or jubilation in gain. Seven, one should not disrespect the demigods. Eight, one should not give unnecessary trouble to any living entity. Nine, one should carefully avoid the various offenses in chanting the holy name of the Lord or in worshiping the deity in the temple. Ten, one should be very intolerant toward the blasphemy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his devotees. Without following the both mentioned ten principles, one cannot properly elevate himself to the platform of sadhana bhakti or devotional service in practice. Altogether, Sri Aurobhuswami mentions twenty items, and all of them are very important. Out of the twenty, the first three, namely accepting the shelter of bona fide spiritual master, taking initiation from him, and serving him with respect and reverence, are the most important <clears throat> so 20 items were described till now basically if we look a little bit more carefully we will see 10 of them are what we have to do and then the second 10 of them are what we should not do because always shastra the scriptures they work in this way they tell you what you have to do yes yeah, so any kind of yes. That you, are having yes. you should always remember krishna and you should never forget, forget him so it goes always like that so this is the preliminary, the basis in the spiritual life, in Sadhana Bhakti. If we don't uh, master this very nicely, even if we do the other ones, we may become diverted at some point in our focus in Krishna Bhakti. Okay? <clears throat> okay. The next important items are as follows. One. One should decorate the body with tilaka, which is a sign of the Vaishnavas. The idea is that as soon as a person sees these marks on the body of the Vaishnava, he will immediately remember Krishna. Lord Chaitanya said that the Vaishnava is he who, when seen, reminds one of Krishna. Therefore, 
it is essential that the Vaishnava mark his body with tilaka to remind others of Krishna. Two, in marking such tilaka, sometimes one may write Hare Krishna on the body. It doesn't say tattoo, it says tilaka. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one should accept flowers and garlands that have been offered to the deity and the spiritual master and put them on one's body. Four, one should learn to dance before the deity. Prabhupada showed the Swami dance, so we try to follow this one. Of course, sometimes we kind of improv improvise on this. With Bhakti Jimmy, we have a special variation. <laughs> Five, one should learn to bow down immediately upon seeing the deity or the spiritual master. Six, as soon as one visits the temple of Lord Krishna, one must stand up. When the deity is being born, brought, should be brought, brought, for, for, a stroll. for a stroll in the street, a devotee should immediately follow the procession. Okay, so here she describes. Uh, oh, actually, uh, I think this is the old version of like born like bear, like mm -hmm. bear, like ah, carry. Okay. carry. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Shri Prabhupada here describes uh, this uh, uh, tradition. Uh, sometimes there is uh, small deities, you have the big deities, but there are some small deities and they're taken out, like we have in my procession every Saturday. And it's very joyful uh, occasion. It's like a big festival. Everybody comes forward and all the devotees, they, they enjoy singing for the deity, um, Harina, Kirtan, and then they make different offerings. That's one <coughs> So, yeah, one could say, bring out little Radha Krishna. <laughs> Why not? We can Nine. bring Radha Govinda. Nine. One must circumambulate the temple. Uh, eight. First. <coughs> a devotee must visit. Oh, sorry. A dev sorry. Eight. A devotee must visit the Vishnu temple at least once or twice every day, morning and evening. In Vrindavan, this system is followed very strictly. All the devotees in town go every morning and evening to visit different temples. Therefore, during these times, there are considerable crowds all over the city. There are about 5,000 5, temples in Vrindavana city. Of course, it is not possible to visit all the temples, but at least, but there are at least 1,000 very big and important temples which were started by the Goswamis and which should be visited. Nine. One must circumambulate the temple building at least three times. One should also circumambulate the whole Brindavan area. Ten, one must worship the deity in the temple according to the regulative principles. Offering arati and prasada, decorating the deity, etc. These things must be observed regularly. Eleven. One must render personal, personal service to the deities. So sometimes when we come to the temple, to Radha Govinda Mandir, we can buy some fruits and just bring them to the deities mm. and give them to Pujar. It's not, it's, not, it's personal service. If we don't have second initiation. <laughs> one must sing, 13. One must perform Sankirtana, 14. One must chant. One must offer prayers. One must recite notable prayers. So that means we memorize prayers. Let's say we quoted here the prayers of Queen Kunti. We memorize those and we go in front of Krishna and recite these prayers. Or we compose our own prayers. <laughs> There's also bona fide. Although it may not be so good in <laughs> composing, but still it's Krishna appreciated. Um, one must taste Mahaprasada. One must drink Charanamrita. One must smell the incense and flowers offered to the deity. One must touch, touch the lotus feet of the deity. This is if you are second initiated. One must see the deity with great devotion. One must offer arati at different times. One must hear about the Lord and his pastimes from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and similar books. One must pray to the deity for his mercy. Very important. One should remember the deity. One should meditate upon the deity. One should render some voluntary service. Not just a regular service, but sometimes we should. Some voluntary service. Spontaneous. <laughs> one should think of the Lord as one's friend. Krishna is my best friend and he will not let me um, 
be destroyed. Kamte pradijani hi nama bhakta pranasha. One should offer everything to the Lord. One should offer a favorite article, such as food or a garment, your favorite article. One should take all kinds of risks and perform all endeavors for Krishna's benefit. Okay, for Krishna's benefit. In every condition, one should be a surrendered soul. One should pour water on the Tulasi tree. One should regularly hear Srimad Bhagavatam in similar literature. One should live in sacred places, place like Patura Vrindavan or Dvarka. One should offer service to Vaishnavas. One should arrange one's devotional service according to one's needs. That means if you are a rich person, I have to worship the Lord uh, opulently. opulently. And not that you know you're very rich, but you offer to Krishna Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam, and you quote Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam, you're back to Prajati. <laughs> no. If you are very simple, then your worship is simple. But if you are sophisticated, then your worship should be accordingly done. Otherwise, you're cheating. Um, in the month of Kartika, <coughs> one should make arrangements for special services. During Janmashtami, one should observe a special service. Okay, so Kartika special service, special vow. Janmashtami special vow should do something extra, not just chant 16 rounds. Should do something extra. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's something. Good beginning. Um, one should do whatever is done with great care and devotion for the deity. One should relish the pleasure of Bhagavatam reading amongst devot among devotees and not among outsiders. Why not among outsiders? Because they don't have faith in Krishna. And, uh, they will inevitably make a comment or they'll commit some offense. So we avoid this. One should, re uh, one should associate with devotees who are considered more advanced. All right. So more advanced devotees. This is our Sangha. One should chant the holy name of the Lord. One should live in the jurisdiction of Natura. Now, the total regulative principles come to an aggregate of 64 items. As we have mentioned, the first <coughs> are the primary 10 regulative principles, then come the secondary 10 regulative principles, and added to this are 44 other activities. So altogether, there are 64 items for discharging the regulative practice of devotional service. Out of these 64 items, five items, okay, this is now very important. This might be actually part of your test. I'm just saying that. Most probably. Yeah, right. 95%. It will be it will be actually part of your mm -hmm. So which are these uh, five items that are most powerful? Who are they? Worshiping the deity. Mm -hmm. Um hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, associating among the devotees, Sankirtan, and living in Matura. Very okay. important. So, even small indulgence in these five can very quickly give bhava. Therefore, they are very, they are very um, powerful. Yeah. I was wondering. I was just thinking about the sixty-four regulative principles. Mm. It seems like um, because of a kali yuga memory, it seems difficult to just memorize all that. Always know kind of bhava. This is <laughs> what is to do. So, what to do? Learn the five most important. Okay. And try mainly to do this. So is it that we don't have to follow all of 64 <coughs> exactly? But we, need to, we should. Is it that we should, if we follow some of the regular principles, then still we're performing favorable devotional service? There are different temples in the most, uh, how to say, in the temples with the high standard. The idea is that they offer to the deity every day 64 upacharas. So all these things are done for the deities. Now in in Iskon, we almost don't have such a temples. I know from Janani Vas Prabhu in Mayapur, they try to follow this almost every day. Every day if possible to offer 64 upacharas. But Sometimes it may not be possible, but they, they try 
to do that. And as far as I know, in, in Vrindavan and in Juho, the standard is really like a temple standard. Rest of our temples, we have more like a home standards of worship. 16 Upacharas, like what generally one should do at home when he has a deities. This is the home standard for worshiping deities. 16 things you offer every day. So we try to focus on the five most important and then as many as from the others we can do naturally without over endeavoring. We try like we try to put tilaka. If someone gives us garland from the deities Mahaprasam, we accept it. We take prasadam. We go in front of the deity, offer prayers. Yes, we try to do these things. But as we said again, the three most important to start the process of bhakti are, are connected with guru and service to the orders of the guru. And the five most potent parts of the practice itself are these five. Worshipping the deities, reading Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, associating with the devotees, living in a holy place, like a temple or the holy dam, or at least visiting as much as possible these holy places and uh, chanting the holy name. These are the five most important. So Sri Prabhupada is saying the 64 items of devotional service should include all of our activities of body, mind, and speech. As stated in the beginning, the regulative principle of devotional service enjoins that all of our senses must be employed in the service of the Lord. Exactly how they can be employed is described in the above 64 items. Now, Shri Rupa Goswami will give evidence from different scriptures supporting the authority uh, authenticity of many of these so how to engage practically our body our mind our senses our speech in krishna this is the job of this rules and regulations so by doing this gradually we should develop spontaneous desire just to engage in krishna consciousness that's the idea okay thank you very much Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Om Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Hare. Hare Hare.